what's up guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and baby let's get into the drama of it all so in this video we're going to be talking about all things real housewives in new jersey as well as it seems like andy has been cleared of all the allegations against him so let's get into it so let's talk about Andy first. So y'all know Leah McSweeney and Brandy Glanville thrusted some accusations against Andy and we covered that on the channel. Well, it looks like he's been cleared of those accusations due to an investigation. Well, Dateline has an article um, where it referenced Leah McSweeney, Brandy Glanville and how they feel about Andy being clear so let's read about it it says Leah McSweeney and Brandy Glanville lawyers throw stones at probe clearing Andy Cohen of drug drink and sexual harassment claims it says less than a week before NBC Universal's um, big pitch to advertisers in the Big Apple Andy Cohen the jewel in the media giant reality TV crown isn't shining so bright after all despite bravo's insistence that an investigation by an outside party has cleared the real housewives franchise boss of unsubstantiated allegations of cocaine use alcohol abuse and sexual harassment attorneys of leah mcsweeney and brandy glenville says it's all a sham uh, this is a per this is perfect timing, McSweeney lawyer Gary Alderman told Dateline Thursday after Bravo put out a statement clear calling their Cohan probe completed and done one line so they can repeat it all for the advertisers at the upfronts. It goes on to say, how do you have an investigation without speaking with anyone? McSweeney's main lawyer added, declaring that their client was never interviewed by the outside investigation law firm. Our opinion is that no one is going to believe this was a real investigation. I am looking forward to reviewing the details of the report from the independent investigation. Glanville's attorney, Brian Friedman, declared since there was no findings of wrongdoing, there of course would be no need to hide or otherwise bury the findings NBC did not speak with uh, the complaining witnesses Freeman said also of his client how is it an investigation writing to the NBC you and Warner Brothers discovered brash on February the 22nd Glanville claimed she was sexually harassed by a video from watch what happens live host Cohen in 2022 telling Glanville that he was an openly gay man wanting to wanting her to watch him have sex with another Bravo star star that night and more later that day cohen said that the video with uh kate chastain was meant as a joke but still to uh, totally inappropriate and i apologize as the spotlight increasingly turned a on the underbelly of the Real Housewives series and unscripted TV, McSweeney sued Cohan, Bravo, and NBC Universal, Warner Brothers Discovery Production Company, Shed Media, and various producers on March the 7th in her jury trial seeking complaint complaint in federal court in the empire state the real housewives of new york star accused cohen of using cocaine with employees to further promote a workplace culture that thrives off of drugs alcohol abuse which leads to failure to accommodate employees who are disabled attempting to remain um substance free McSweeney took to social media to uh, the same day to further pull back the veil on the state. Your favorite Bravo shows are run by people who create dangerous work environments, encourage substance abuse to artificially create drama and cynically prey on vulnerabilities of their employees Cohen's own lawyer Gibson Dunn threatened to go after McSweeney herself if she didn't immediately retract and withdraw her allegation she didn't and they haven't made a legal move on their own with Bravo's statement of the probe exonerating Cohen, McSweeney's attorneys, Almond scoffed and added, We look forward to reviewing all the interview evidence and final reports of the investigation that NBC Universal conducted when we received them during the discovery phase of the lawsuit. While the sources of NBCU um, say that outside investigators did try to talk to McSweeney and Glanville via their lawyers, Bravo had no comment on if they had reached out to the two women 
or their attorneys. The NBC unit also would not release a copy of the report into Cohen's behavior, citing attorney client privilege. If NBC Universal do send a comment, we will update you. With the Watch What Happens Live picked up until the end of 2025 and a, a boatload of lucrative Real Housewives shows renewed today, Cohen may seem as secure as anyone can be in Hollywood, and perhaps he is going into May 13th NBCU up front. But despite the company's proclaiming any look into the claims of the be misbehavior all handled, this is nowhere near over. So you guys already know if you would like to read this article for yourself, it's in the description bar below. Uh, but this is my thoughts. I really don't think anything is going to come out of Brandy or Leah's lawsuit. And I would be very surprised if they do get any money or any compensation from it. That's not to say that I don't think Andy is, is not at fault, as well as I don't think that the um, lawyers had valid questions because they did. Like it is mighty convenient that all of a sudden they're saying that Andy is cleared from this third party investigation and that they didn't find any evidence to substantiate the claims that were brought up against him right around the time when I guess Bravo is doing this huge conference to pitch the show to their advertisers. That is convenient because we know Andy is the face of Bravo. On top of that, um, like they said, y'all did this third party investigation and Andy is innocent, y'all are saying, then when we do our discovery, there should be no pushback when we ask for that information. And they're right. And I like, I get what they're saying about like, y'all had this third party investigation, but nobody reached out to our clients. No one contacted us. That's weird. But I guess I look at it from the network standpoint of like, well, why would we need to reach out to you? Or maybe that's what the network is saying. Like, why would we need to reach out to you guys when you are suing us and all of your complaints are cl and claims are like in your lawsuit? What's the need to talk to you? Like, you know what I mean? But I, I feel like they have valid complaints. But I also feel like Leah and Brandy just give me disgruntled co-workers. And like I said, I don't think Andy is not at fault because he is. I think that phone call that Andy had with Brandy was inappropriate. You are her boss. You shouldn't be talking about anything sexual with her. But I also feel as though that is the atmosphere at Bravo. It's very like cheeky and like it's very lax. But I don't think I, I feel like Andy doesn't understand or he does. Maybe he does understand. And he thought like they could keep going the same way. But I think he needs to realize like gone are the early days of Bravo where like everybody was kind of on level playing field. I don't think any of the ladies thought that. Or Andy thought that Bravo was going to be this big sensation to the fact that they have a Bravo con, you know, and the, they've made people millionaires, almost billionaires in a sense with their like with being on the show that I just feel as though you got to shift how you move. I think the lines have been so blurred for Andy because he becomes friends with these ladies. We saw how he got close to Kathy Griffin, Nene, Bethany, you know, Luann. Who else? Ramona, the little Kyle, Lisa Vanderpump. Like he gets close to these people and becomes friends with them. And I think it's hard for him, even with Teresa, Joe and Melissa. Like, I think he sometimes forgets that like you still are their boss. You may not be the person signing their checks, but you still have like the power dynamics aren't equal. So you have to move differently. But again, to me, I feel like Leah and Brandy are giving disgruntled co-workers. And the reason why I say that is Brandy was fine with being all being all sexual and all of that stuff. But now that her acts have kind of got, possibly gotten her in trouble and that she has been used as a producer's puppet and she thought the producers were going to protect her and they haven't. Now she's mad and she's trying to burn everything down. And it's like, I think what made me feel that way is when she posted that story about Andy and the conversation that they had on FaceTime together and I was like you held on to that to throw at him and then I think she got the wind knocked out of her sails when Andy immediately came out and didn't let that story fester and say you know what it was inappropriate for me to be on the phone saying that stuff to you but you know it was a joke and Christine I think it was like it was a Christine Chastain or Jessica Chastain, she can vouch for me that it was a joke. 
I don't think Brandy was ready for him to come out that quickly. I think she thought that he would, you know, let it fester and let it build up on the internet. But Andy was like, nah, let me get in front of it. So that's when I was like, okay, Brandy, you've been holding on to things just to throw at people because you're mad. Because I guarantee you, if they were cool, she wouldn't have a problem with that. Because we've seen the way Brandy operates. We've seen how she gets down. But I think Brandy also has to take accountability that you're a grown adult. And just because production told you to do something doesn't mean you had to do it. You definitely could have been like, you know what, I have morals, I have integrity, and I'm not going to compromise them for a check. That's when personal responsibility comes into play. Same thing with Leah. Leah was happy to still be a part of Bravo when she thought she was going to be on one of the next Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trip, when she thought she was going to be on the reboot of Real Housewives um, New York, and she got mad when she thought she was going to be on Roni Legacy, and it didn't happen. And it's like, you were cool and singing the network's praises until you realized the network said, you know what, we gonna go a different way. Then to say that the network, it creates a hostile work environment and they push people to drink and then now you're accusing Andy of doing, you know, cocaina. But we saw you on Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Thailand telling all the ladies, y'all should drink, this is boring. So you fed into that environment as well if that is actually true. And I have yet to see her make a statement where she acknowledges the part she played into this, this what she's saying is happening, which makes me feel like you're not taking accountability. On top of that, Leah, Leah's a grown adult. You're a grown adult and you have, Real Housewives of um, New York has been on TV for 16 years. And in them 16 years, we have seen these grown women in their 50s, 40s, and 60s get so drunk where they pee on themselves with adult diapers, where we seen Sonya break glass with her feet. We've seen Luann fall drunkenly in bushes. We've seen Luann actually have to become more sober and actually go to AA meetings. It's like you had a clear representation and evidence of what you were getting into. So I can't give you that. When nobody told you to get on a show and, you know, take a risk with your own sobriety. You have to take ownership of that. And I feel like Leah's not trying to do that. So that's why I feel like it's giving disgruntled. And these are my opinions. You can have a different opinion than me, but that's just how I feel. Like, I just feel like, yes, to me, everybody is at fault. Andy should not be this close to his employees. So he needs to start moving differently and start stop blurring the lines. Leah and Brandy have to take ownership that at the end of the day, you are an adult and nobody forced you to do any of this. You chose to do it. So let's talk about New Jersey. So Teresa recently did an interview. I don't really know who she did the interview with, but it looked like one of those like today shows, like morning shows that go, you know, they do. And so she was asked about um, her situation with Joe and Melissa. And I'm gonna play the audio for you guys. And then I'm going to read what Joe commented. Parents were alive. My parents are no longer here. And after what they did after my wedding, tried to make my wedding all about them. That was the last straw. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and, um, and this season, something else comes out that I was shocked to hear. And that's it, like, yeah, like my heart starts beating really fast yeah. just because I get if a stranger goes against me, and, and that's fine, because a stranger, you, you expect that from a stranger, but when your family member yeah. deliberately hurts you, yeah. that's on a whole nother level. So there's no chance, no, and no chance reconciliation. I, I get signs. I don't know if anyone out here, um, you know, gets signs from people that have passed that you, you know, that I was tremendously close with my parents. Like, yeah. my father lived with me after my mother passed away. I get signs from my parents all the time that I'm on the right track. Great. Because like your family members should not hurt you. So that was the interview. Well, Joe was in the comments and he said this, wow, she is a sick human being, manipulation at the deflection of her disgusting behavior. Her parents from heaven are telling her she is on the right path to hurt their son. That's some sick shit. So here's my thing. I don't get why no one understands what she's saying. I got what Teresa was saying, basically saying that her brother hurt her in a way that 
she no longer wants a relationship that she can't come back from and she questions whether or not she's on the right path but then she sees signs that she believes are from her parents letting her know that she's walking in the right direction and this statement from Joe only makes me believe that he still wants a relationship with his sister but his communication skills are horrible because my thing is you don't want a relationship with your sister like you're you're committed to not speaking to her and she's committed to not speaking to you so you don't think you not having a relationship with her is hurting her as well so how is she not like i i guess i'm not understanding because to me i do feel like they're both on the right track joe and Teresa don't know how to communicate with each other they speak so nasty to one another they've said some really messed up stuff to one another at this point maybe not being you know in each other's lives is the right path and maybe your parents are happy that y'all are not speaking to each other and y'all are moving in the right direction because constantly being in turmoil and fighting one another doesn't really help just to say that we're a family and that I talk to my brother but every time I talk to my brother either he cussing me out or I'm cussing him out what sense does that make so let's move over to Margaret so pretty much um i have a lot of clips as it pertains to margaret <laughs> um she's been doing interviews and the first one i want to start off with is two t's in a pod where Tamara pretty much confirms that margaret told her that production said that it was okay for her not to film with Teresa. so let me play that for you margaret in new york before they started the season and she had told me she's like you know, we had our meeting, our production meeting, and they said, we don't have to film with each other. We can do this separate. And I told her, I said, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think you should do that. I think yeah. that you should. She's like, nope, not happening. I had met with Margaret in New York before they started the season. And she had told me, she's like, you know, we had our meeting, our production meeting, and they said, we don't have to film with each other. We can do this separate. And I told her, I said, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think you should do that. I think yeah. that you should. She's like, nope, not happening. I actually agree with Tamra. I I don't think it's right that production is basically saying that they don't have to film together. That's the point of this whole entire show. And I feel like breeding that type of division in the group is not fun to watch. Like you already see what happened with Real Housewives of Potomac. There was a clear divide. And like when they were all in group scenes, it was awkward and the energy was off and it didn't feel right. So maybe it might work for this season for uh, New Jersey, but I don't think it's going to work going forward. And I don't understand why the network basically said, yo, it's okay if y'all do it this way. But keeping up with Margaret saying that she's not going to film with Teresa, she recently did an interview with Hollywood access Hollywood and the interviewer asked her about how she felt about Teresa so I'm gonna play that clip for you guys and then we're gonna discuss like how long can we keep going with this group kind of being really divided especially with the Melissa Teresa thing right it's like how long can this train keep going with this cast yes. obviously yes. I love this cast yes of course we all love this I cast. agree but what are your thoughts on this cast continuing and remaining the same? I don't, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think, um, you know, there's a, I think if someone's husband is just so wealthy and preaches it all the time, I don't know why his wife is showing up at subway shops slinging baloney. Um, so maybe it's time for her to go, you know, I don't know. That's all I have to say. I don't think it could continue okay. the, the way it is. Okay. Um, at all, I, I, I don't, but I think, you know, there are deep bonds with many of us Yeah. that can continue. And I think there's just, you know, a few people who just dig their heels in and, and do horrible things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, which is sad, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But I think certain people cross certain boundaries that, you know, I can't come back from, Melissa can't come back from, Rachel can't come back from. Yeah. Many people can't come back from, and I think the other cast members are going to have a hard time turning their head to at this point. Yeah. I really do feel that way. A lot of So here's my thing. I like trout mouth pigtails 
Margaret Josephs. But I think Margaret is overestimating her importance and her value to the network or to this franchise. Because the truth of the matter is, Margaret is not a focal point of this show the way in which Teresa is. Teresa's fans go up for her they support her they they the fact that they all followed her to that wedding special and Teresa got over a million views or a million in ratings which was higher than any episode of Real Housewives in New Jersey the network's not getting rid of Teresa they would get rid of you before they ever get rid of Teresa and if they do get rid of Teresa from the show she's getting her own show and y'all will probably be on this show together I don't know but I just think that Margaret contradicted herself for me when she was like when someone digs their heels in well ma'am all we've been shown of you and I know it's only been one episode is you saying that you don't want people to speak to you don't want to speak to Teresa you don't want to engage with her same with Melissa so it's not really and I mean Teresa's doing it with Melissa too but she's open to having conversations with y'all y'all aren't open to having conversations with her the only person Teresa says she not cool with is Melissa and her brother she says she could communicate with the rest of y'all but I don't know I don't know I just feel as though at this point I they would probably get rid of y'all before they get rid of her but that's just my thoughts because I get some people will be like well Leah they got rid of Nene they got rid of Vicky and all of that stuff but if you think about it when they got rid of Nene we still had notable people on the show where it's like yeah it sucks that Nene's not here but okay at least I still got Candy I still got Kenya I still have Portia I still have Sheree I still have Marlo I still have people from the golden era of Real Housewives of Atlanta that like I still have faith that this show could give me something without Nene and then when you look at OC they didn't really need Vicky you had that that chaotic mess which is Bronwyn and you have Shannon you know freaking out and then you had Kelly Dodd and her racist crazy self and you had all these people that like you didn't you could get rid of Vicky you could get rid of Vicky and still have notable people on the show that you were sure that they were going to give you a show and even I look even if I talk about um Beverly Hills they could get rid of Kyle and we would be okay because when I think of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills I don't think of Kyle I think of Sutton I think of Erica Jane I think of Doree I think of Kim Richards like you know I think of Garcelle now it's like they have positioned people on these shows where like you don't need the OG anymore whereas when I look at New Jersey I would be fine with them getting rid of Teresa and Melissa but I don't know if the network is willing to take that blow in their ratings tanking from people not watching because they don't see Teresa on there anymore so then they asked Margaret about her situation with Jackie. So I'm going to play that clip, but I'm going to speed it up because I think it's almost two minutes long. All the girls, when Jan died, yeah. you know, reached out to me. Even, right. even Teresa, you know, when he did die. He, everyone, right. Jen, Jen ate it, but Melissa had come to the funeral. Um, Dolores, even Jackie at the time, I was still close with Jen. Fessler, Rachel Fuda, every, everybody was there for me at the time of his passing. But, you know, the year following is just like, you know, that's when you need everybody around you, right? right. It's just right. like... So, of course, the, you know, the girls were very sweet. Unfortunately, um, Jackie really disappointed me. Yeah. yeah. She was very, very disappointing. You know, mm -hmm. if it's not happening on, on Instagram for her, it's not happening in real life. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram's not real life. Instagram is not real life. We no. all do know that. Yes. So, tell me about you and Jackie. Where is your relationship now? Because we see in the first episode, you kind of almost like, I felt like you were insinuating that you're a little disconnected because Melissa got her book and you didn't. No, like, yeah, Melissa had gotten her book. Jen Fessler um, had read the book. Anthony, who helped her get the book deal, who I introduced her to, or she would not be working with, um, got to read the book. I had given her my entire press list um, for her to send the people the book. She needed the press list. She had asked really my nice. assistant. I didn't get an advanced copy at that point. I purchased it, the advanced copy on Amazon. I'm gonna support her. I'm gonna give, gift her book. Um, I thought it was weird. And I felt like she was trying to stick it to me. So I was hurt, you know, I was just hurt. So we, and when I brought it up to her, she was like, we're not that close, you're entitled. How dare you think you should get the book? Um, you know, Melissa's the press. Like, you know, Melissa was like the New York Times, the way she asked. I was yeah. like, okay, you know. So we're not very, 
It was just very bizarre, her reaction. She could have just said, I'm so sorry, I'll send you the book. But right. instead, she was like, you didn't help me. By the way, everybody's a team. I am nothing without everybody mm -hmm. who is stuck by me. I have the most amazing team. I could do nothing without them, and I'm very grateful. Mm. I'm very grateful for the, you know, my girls around me. She is an ingrate. And um, I'm not saying I'm taking the credit for a book. It's nothing like that. The girl's the most talented writer. Right. I want to put that out there. She is right. so super talented. Mm -hmm. But no one does anything on their own. Got it. Without the people who champion you. And she is... Yeah. And it's so quite here's apparent. my thoughts. I feel like Jackie doesn't go off on people the way that Margaret is saying. And I'm pretty much indifferent towards Jackie. I can take or leave her. But Margaret saying that Jackie was like, she's entitled, she's this and she's that. I feel like Margaret had to be exhibiting those types of behaviors for Jackie to feel this way. And I feel like maybe Margaret's feelings were hurt because she thought that her and Jackie were a lot closer than than what Jackie thought that they were and I feel like Margaret expected Jackie to be like singing her praises for the way that she helped her out with like the book and everything that I think it really bothered her but I am surprised that she said she's disappointed in Jackie and the only way I could think that she's disappointed in Jackie is because Jackie clicked up with Teresa and maybe they have con they have had conversations of how Jackie feels about Teresa and the whole Evan rumors and how that really hurt Jackie but I just feel like I need to see the breakdown in their relationship. So Jackie did an interview with two teeds in a pod with general for Fessler. And they were talking about the dynamics of the group. And Jackie pretty much said it's become like the hunger games. Like everybody is clicking up and believing that if their fraction is the biggest, they can stay on the show the longest. So I'm going to play that clip for you guys. And then there's another one I have for you as well had a premiere party it looked like uh messy fessy was there melissa dolores I, were you not there jackie were no, you not, I'm not invited i'm not friends with margaret anymore but i you know there's the the problem is what that th this show has turned into the hunger games and i think it's ruining the show because there's like everyone is convinced that if they get the most people on their team and then they take the picture and label it like a team that Bravo's going to see it and they're going to think, oh, well, they have more people. Let's just keep that team. And it's not the way it works. You guys know that's not the way it works. Yeah. But it's turning the whole thing into the Hunger Games. Like, it's just making everybody so divided. Like, get together, have a good time. But, like, not everything has to be so diabolical and so strategic. And so, no, I wasn't there. But, like, you know, Dolores. But is it, didn't Melissa write Dream Team yes, as the caption? and cap it was very strategic. <laughs> just the same same strategy as when she labeled you guys going to dinner as a family dinner. Like, that was, I mean, it's just that was, um, what's already. Yolanda did that, right? She so I thought I had the picture that they were talking about. I had it in my phone, but I deleted it and I don't feel like looking for it. But the picture was of Melissa, Margaret, Jennifer Fessler and Dolores. And Melissa posted the picture saying dream team. And from what Jackie is saying, she's not lying, put it because it is kind of given survivor where everyone has picked their side and now they're trying to recruit people on each side. But I do feel like that's production's fault for allowing this dynamic to persist for so long that now that is the vibe of the show and it sucks that they can't get back to where they used to be where like yeah they don't like each other but they could still film and be around one another but now you can tell that they all have like this very strong like disdain for one another and it is very toxic at this point so the next clip i'm gonna play is Jackie and Jennifer Fessler being on two T's in the pod. And I think they're doing like rapid fire questions. Marge would make up with Teresa. Yes. I think if Melissa was gone, Marge would make up with Teresa. Yes. I really strongly, no. strongly believe it. And Rachel <laughs> said that Jackie's insecure no matter what her role is on the show. I think, unfortunately, she's being a mouthpiece for people that she's trying to impress. Can we do a little Mary F? We don't like to say kill. So Mary F, bye, like goodbye. John Fuda, Joe Gorga, and Louie. Can I kill myself? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so here's the thing. 
A lot of the girls, especially Melissa and Margaret, are saying that Jackie flipped on them or basically that she, that her relationship with Teresa seems forced. And to be honest, it kind of does. And we've never seen Jackie be this vocal, but maybe with her writing the book, and, you know, she might have found herself in her voice. I don't know. But I am curious and interested to see, like, what truly transpired for them to be like, we're not cool no more and we don't want to be friends. Like, what really took place where Jackie is saying that, like, if Melissa wasn't on the show, Margaret would be cool with Teresa. Like, what have you seen that gives you that? I wish you would have, like like added to that statement but hey it is what it is at this point and I would and I really am interested that's honestly what drew me into this season was seeing the breakdown between Jackie and Margaret because I really did think that they were like locked in and like were ride or die friends but to see that they are at odds I really want to know why but yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and definitely drop down in the comments below and give me your thoughts on all the things that I have discussed with you all. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces.